and, and another thing that I'd like to add mm-hmm. people always talk about all oh, black people again you know uh, the treatment that black people receive right yeah it is very bad like, in, in a lot of instances but also I think the fact that black people do not and this is something I have to say. Mm. Black people are hard on each other, you know. Mm. Like some of the, some of the, some of the, some, like some of the time we can be very hard on each other. Mm. And if you're not taking care of, of, of each other as people, and not necessarily as people from Botswana, mm-hmm. but just people from Africa, just mm-hmm. black people, mm-hmm. and, and just people, you know. Mm-hmm. Like how is a man who comes from China or India mm-hmm. or Europe gonna treat you when he sees you you talking to another guy who comes from francis town and you're you know mogalaga this mogalaga that you, you you're calling a guy who comes from a certain part of that way Mosaro, you know he sees you disrespecting your own so-called yeah. brothers yeah. why is he gonna respect you yeah. Yeah. if he sees that you you know you don't yeah. even treat your own people right why yeah. is some why is somebody gonna come and treat you Right. right when he sees that you're not treating you, you you're not respecting yourself you're not respecting your own people why should they respect you that's that that's where i am so i think it's it, it's a bit shocking sometimes when black people expect like what do you expect look at how some of your behavior not not everybody you know but come on man a, a lot of what's going on has got nothing to do with white people anymore you know right. we're doing this to ourselves now mm-hmm. we need to we need to really cut out the the the, the, the nonsense Mm-hmm. I mean, look at look, look at America. Mm-hmm. You know, you got ridiculously high rates mm-hmm. of of, and you know, I was I was talking about this to a friend of mine. I said, mm-hmm. you know, I think one of the problems is because there's such a high rate of absent fathers mm-hmm. in the black community. Mm-hmm. Many men grow up with a warped sense of what being a man actually is because nobody shows you. So we learn every day. If you don't, if you don't have a man or a, a, a positive male figure in your life to teach you, mm-hmm. you're not even going to be able to talk and reason with another man. So I may bump into you, we mm-hmm. may be in a club, mm-hmm. and a, 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 an incident which should just be, hey, sorry, sorry, it now turns into a jail sentence for both of us because we don't even know how to reason. <laughs> Like I'm telling you, like <laughs> it's something that I see. Like sometimes I, I used to see this when I came when I when right. I came back here and I was 17. Mm. Sometimes you'd be walking in an area and there'd be no black people. Mm. You see another black person and they and they stare you down. They'd be like, what? What? And it would actually turn into a fight. This is this is like a London thing. Mm. Like <laughs> where it's just you and it could be a thousand people. Maybe it's just you mm. and just a couple of other black people, but Right. Why? Why are we bumping heads? Mm. What you know? What has happened that we cannot even conversate or disagree? Every mm. disagreement doesn't have to lead to a death. We mm. should be able to disagree about certain things, you know. So I think I think all of that is about the the breakdown of the nuclear family, and a lot of that stuff happened in like you know the sixties and seventies with things like Quintel Pro and all, 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 all types of different things. You know that we could get into, you know, but like, as well, we need to recognize what is going on around us, mm. Mm. and then decide: Are you gonna? Are you gonna? What are you gonna do? Mm. You know, you can't pretend as if these things are not happening. Mm. Mm. So you've got to decide: Like, what type of pe- what type of person are you gonna be? What type mm. of children are you gonna are you gonna raise? How are you gonna how, how are you gonna interact? I mean, there's many situations that I've been in where things could have gone left, but you know, you have to be a bit more level headed about. It. And this is what I mean about the whole respect thing. I yeah. think it's very important that we start respecting ourselves yeah. and respecting each other. And re- if we expect anybody else to respect us, true. no, that's that's pretty interesting. Um, you know, those dynamics are always uh, you know discussed as well because I've seen a lot of you know Chinese people coming over here and they build their own community. They respect each other. You know, yeah. right? Stay together. Stick together. You know, build community together, make more money. Spider web, spider web, spread, spread the word. You know, the same thing with the Latina folks. You know know what it is, son? Like Mm -hmm. with us, Mm -hmm. we like competing with each other. There you go. (laughs) So, so we spend so much time Mm -hmm. on nonsense. Mm -hmm. You know, instead Mm -hmm. of building, Mm -hmm. I got, I have to have bigger rims than you. 
Mm. And mm. I'm going to now waste, you know, it's like, oh my God. It's like, sometimes <laughs> it's so petty. It's like, what nah, are we doing? Yeah. You know, like what you said, like, mm. I, I have a lot of um, friends, mm. uh, Asian friends, and they tell me, they say, look, mm. some, some of our families, when we came, they had nothing. We had to stay like three, four families in one house, mm. you know? Mm-hmm. And then you put pool money together, you buy property. But now every single one of those families may have 10, 20 properties. You know, mm-hmm. every single person who has a who has a shop, mm-hmm. you know, they, they they set themselves up. And then it's very similar to like um in Botswana, like mm-hmm. the community has become so strong that you can they can even welcome people to come into the country, mm-hmm. not, not not even have to go to the um bank to get a loan. And when you think about that, that's smart. That's what you should be doing. Because if you take money from the bank, you're going to be taking it at interest. It's going to be harder for you to pay it back. Now, if if I know you're in Oakland or you know I'm I'm here and, and I'm saying, look, Sonny, I need you to help me come over. That's what we should be doing. We should be pooling our resources together. But instead, one of us is going to come and now we're going to be in competition and we're spending mm-hmm. money and trying to, mm-hmm. trying to look like the head Negro in charge. And all of these things don't mean anything. You know? And I think... I think we waste a lot of time and money on on nonsense. And what like you what you're saying. That, what do you guys call that? Collective economics, right? Is that what? Um, you, know, you know, yeah. I think, I, th- I, I, I think look, mm-hmm. I, I think, you know, one of the things which I think is very depressing is the mm-hmm. ownership. I mean, we were talking about music, you know, from music to property. It's very important to own something. Mm. And you know, like like I was saying earlier, but you know, it's difficult to make an educated man a slave. You can't a person who owns something ah, and this is another thing that I've always said to people, you never mm-hmm. see people with title deeds in a riot. You don't. People with mortgages and title <laughs> deeds and stuff and responsibilities, they don't go out there, right? Right. <laughs> Disenf- disenfranchised people, mm-hmm. marginalized people, frustrated mm-hmm. people go out there mm-hmm. and do stuff like that. So this is another thing I think is very important. And that's why I, I, I talk about um, things like crypto. Because, mm. you know, if we, if we talk about the world and the structure of the world, like, like I said earlier, it's centralized. So that mm. means there are gatekeepers. We know that there are certain people that control information, data, power, blah, 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 blah. Mm. Now, if you're going, the only thing that can level that playing field truly mm. is decentralized finance. So really cryptocurrency is probably it, this is almost like the gold rush mm. and like i don't think people actually realize this is one of the few times in history that you can actually um i mean look i don't want to get into bitcoin too much but like mm. i i know a guy a friend of mine mm. who he got a few coins and he he was lucky when he got them mm. today they're worth like you know over a hundred thousand pounds and this is a guy who didn't even know anything about about um Bitcoin. I can't remember how, but it's a long story, but he basically locked his way into the coins. Mm. But, you know, the point I'm trying to make is that there are very few industries that you can get into legally mm. where, where, where your life can change. Like, mm. At the moment, people are changing their lives and some of them are not even trading crypto coins. Mm. They're, just, they're just looking for a coin, mm. uh, finding the right coin. If that coin shoots up, mm. you know, they're doing well. So, it, it is changing like a lot a lot of things. And I think I think I think definitely um the internet, things like the blockchain, all of those kind of industries, those are probably the only place that you actually where, where, where like things like racism don't really come mm-hmm. into it. You know what I mean? Right. right can right. you can you like do you know how to like do um do the nodes to to to, mm-hmm. to verify this transaction? If you can do that and you have those computer skills, you're gonna get paid. Doesn't matter whether you got dreads, whether you're, you know, doesn't matter who you are. You can right, be right, right wing, right, left wing, right. as long as you can deliver. Right. That, that, that's kind of like one of the few places yeah. where the le- where the playing field is level, and also right. um, trading as well. Like whether you're trading options or mm. or, or or CFDs or you know whatever, or mm. even futures. Mm. I think that's one of the few places. Like if we talk about work and discrimination that we we're talking about earlier, mm. you can get discriminated against in any field, mm-hmm. whether it's music. You know politics. No one can discriminate against you on the markets. It's about, you know, are, are you trading properly? Are you, you know, you know, it, that's what it is. 
so there, like they, you know, you could like I said, it's for me, it's one of the few places where the playing field is level. Wow, that's pretty cool, man. You know, our audience are gonna love this. Trust me. Um, I hope they get into it because, like, that's what that's what I want to do. I mean, you know what I think we should be doing. I like what Akon is doing, and like you know, he's 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 got his own coin. I think we need a coin. Africa needs a coin. Mm -hmm. You know, what? Why? Why are we still? Why don't we? Why are we lagging behind? You know, this this kid's the the program in in, in um in Botswana. Why isn't somebody trying to develop something like that? We should be we should be moving towards things like that. You know, creating more apps. You know, telling our story. Mm -hmm. That type of stuff. Instead of waiting for somebody else to tell it or mm -hmm. give us the opportunity, I think we need to create a lot of these opportunities. And that's why I was saying earlier, this is one of the best times to be um, definitely in the entertainment industry mm -hmm. because we have the means. As long as you have internet connection, you're you're in. You're winning. I love it, man. I love it. Let's talk about that more. You know, yeah. <laughs> pretty, yeah. soon, pretty soon. Uh, so, uh, Ralph, uh, your thought on Trump refusing to leave uh, the, the office <laughs> and, and causing the insurrection, mm. and maybe okay. even, you know, about the, the 75 million people that voted for him. Your thought you on know, that? You know, <laughs> you, know? Like, like, you know, like I said earlier about, uh, mm. about, about Britain, Britain is funny, like, you know, yeah. 50, almost 50% 50 of the people in this country voted to leave the EU, 50% yeah. wanted to stay. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's very, po it's very, it's like America, it's polarized. Mm. Um, but I think, I think Trump was a reaction to eight years of Obama. Okay. That's what I think. Mm -hmm. And I think that um, eight years of Obama brought out the beast in some people. And they just said, you know what? Nah. And I think they just got fed up with, the, the Democrats and what they represented and mm -hmm. you know they were riled up and I think I think um I think Trump represents a lot of a lot of um white men who feel threatened or who feel that their position is being threatened maybe by um maybe by just the pace of integration mm. and what's happening in the world because there was a bit of a reaction and like you know because it was weird because even in the UK, you had the rise of populist politics. You know, populism right. is, is on the rise. Is on the rise. Pe yeah, yeah pe people are being more openly racist, and yeah, I think again, it didn't. It, it didn't shock me, but it did. Like mm -hmm. I, I was surprised that he did that, mm. but you know, mm, I wasn't surprised at the same time mm. because I think you know what I think as well. Mm -hmm. I think the guy's actually quite, I think he's quite calculated. Mm -hmm. I think he's a smart dude. Mm -hmm. I think he's playing a game. Mm -hmm. I don't think that he... He's definitely playing the game. That's what I think. <laughs> I think he was definitely playing a game. I don't think that... Because, like, look, I, I think a lot of people like to, mm -hmm. you know, write him off as some sort of buffoon. He, he's not stupid, okay? Mm -hmm. The guy knows what he's doing. Mm -hmm. And he's, he's a master manipulator. Mm -hmm. Because yeah. if you look at... If you look at what he did with a Twitter account. No one's mm. ever done that. Mm. You know, no one's ever done that. Like, mm -hmm. you, you gotta, you gotta hand it to him. I mean, he went from being a TV star to president. I, I didn't see that one coming. That was not on my bingo card <laughs> at all. I was like, yeah. no mm -hmm. way. Mm -hmm. I, I, I really didn't think that was gonna, and you know, it's funny. I didn't think Brexit was gonna happen. I didn't right. think Trump was gonna get elected. Right. But, but I think it, what it shows you is the mood. Mm. of the people because at the end of the day those people voted for this man mm. and no matter what he said or no matter what he did they were sticking with him like mm. there's nothing that you could tell Trump was like Tyson in 89 Tyson could have done anything yeah. like there's nothing you could have told any black man about Mike Tyson in 89 mm -hmm. nothing yeah. Yeah. it was just like no way Mike Tyson was just you know he, 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 he had that kind of mm. and I don't know how Trump managed to do this but like he definitely tapped into what a lot of people did not see. And, and what I mean by that is that, you know, his base is working class. He's not working class at all. You know what I mean? He's from, he's from Manhattan. You know what I mean? He, 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 he's like the type of people that they probably grew up making fun of. Mm. You know what I'm saying? So I think the way that he managed to position himself as a man of the people, mm. it, that, that, he's not stupid. 
But wow. I definitely think what he did was very reckless. And mm. yeah, I think it was a wake up call for America as well. Mm. 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 It's dangerous. Very I mean, dangerous. Like, 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 that's like bordering on fascism. You know, I think like some of the, yeah, some of the stuff that he's done and like, yeah, yeah. you know, some of his actions. You, you I mean, if he, he, he had like, you know, Russian dictator vibes sometimes. I was like, yeah, right. Trump's right. like sometimes he was like a, like a, 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 a Latin dictator. Sometimes it's a bit like an African dictator. I mean, look he at his really... bodies, man. Look at his yeah, bodies. There you yeah. go. Putin, <laughs> yeah. um, Kim, you know. He, Kim, he, you know. He, 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 does, bodies, you know, he so. does have dictator vibes. Like, he moves like a dictator. He's friends with, what's his name? Um, <laughs> the guy from Saudi. Um, yeah, the, the guy from Saudi, you know. So um, Mohammed bin... M MBS, yeah. Mohammed bin, you know who I'm talking about. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So I think he looks up to people like that. And yeah. he kind of sees yeah. them as strong. And, like, you know, mm -hmm. even his rhetoric, very, yeah. very reckless talk. Mm -hmm. And I was surprised that, yeah. you know what shocked me? Mm -hmm. That nobody in the pub, in the party actually checked them. That's what I was surprised at. Like, I was like, has this guy become that powerful that nobody's even going to say, hey, what the hell are you saying? Like, you know what he, I mean? He, he believes that he can run for president again. You know that, right? I, mean, I know. In 2024, he wants to try. Yeah, he wants to try again. You know, he's already, you know, energizing his base. <laughs> no, but what, 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 what do you say about the Republicans who didn't actually say, hey, hey, come on, DJT, just calm down, you know? Like, was he that out of control? I think a lot of Republicans, they, they, they love him, to be honest with you. You know, yeah. I think they, they, a lot of them, they stand with him, you know. Um, yeah. I mean, yeah. probably yeah. just few, you know, who say that, no, we, we don't like what you do. But deep down in their hearts, you know, um, I think they love him, you know. Do you think that he stands a chance, though, of, of, of coming back in? I think there's a chance that he can. I think yeah. there's a chance that he can, you know. I, I think if he can continue to energize his base, you know. I mean, the guy, the people love him, man. What, the, like, people like, who do you love him, they love have him. You, have you got and, people, they actually like, don't hide it. If you go out to the I streets, they, I mean, even here in California. Can you imagine that, here in California? That's what I was going to ask back. you. Like, I was going to ask you that. Like, what, what, what do they like out there in Cali? Like, what are the, what are the in California Cali, I mean, there's not a whole lot. But if you go down to, especially in Southern California, in uh, Orange County, and all, there's a lot of Trump supporters over there. And they're not yeah. even hiding it. You'd be surprised, even so. There are some black people who support Trump. <laughs> <laughs> hey, look, and you know what it is? It's it's not yeah. to say that it's not to say that you can't support him if you're black. Yeah. But mm -hmm. the guy says some wild stuff, man. Like I yeah. didn't support that guy after the stuff you that know? he said. He says some yeah. wild things. So some people just believe that you know, at least Trump, we know that you know he 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 got a knife in his hand. He wants to stab us. You know, some of these people we can't even see the knife. Yeah, you know, we're <laughs> look, I I I hear that, but at the end of the day, again, yeah. you know, we we can't we we can't we can't like we can't let our standards be that low. <laughs> we're yeah. like, okay, you know what? Let's just let's just deal with this guy. He's horrible, but at least he's 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 telling us he's horrible. Nah, I think I think we deserve. A little bit better than that. That's what I yeah, yeah, yeah. And to be honest with you, what I, I mean, personally overall, feel mm -hmm. is, is that, you know, the Republicans or Democrats are not going to mm -hmm. solve the problems of black people. I think they need to solve their own problems. That's what mm -hmm. I think. Yeah. Oh, it's tough. I mean, even with uh, the Democrats, I mean, like, it's not like it's just because we have this guy in, in office right now, our problems are going to be solved, you know? B Biden was responsible for the crime bill. He was one yeah. of the people who signed off on that crime bill, like the 90s. Right. Right. You know, him, Hillary, look, man, I don't trust politicians in general because, right. like, I know a lot of them have blood on their hands, but, like, mm -hmm. you know, you can't... Mm -hmm. And, like, with me, I'm not, I'm not one of these types of people that I will only call out you know, mm -hmm. like the other day, I, I I said a post about Don Lemon, and it's because, mm -hmm. you know, as much as I don't care for Trump, mm -hmm. I don't like people who are impartial. Like mm -hmm. Don Lemon, constantly, constantly, mm -hmm. he's obsessed with the guy. Like mm -hmm. every single day, he's talking about Trump. It's annoying. I can't mm -hmm. watch that. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, I don't like that. So it, I think it's, it's we, almost like it's, it's personal. <laughs> it's, exactly. Exactly. You know? so, and I think I think I think we have to we have to call out. Yeah, you know, when it, it doesn't matter who it is, we call out our own and call out right. whoever. But but talk, talking about talking about Don Lemon, let let us uh, I want to hear your your point or your your um, 
your perspective on on Piers Morgan really protecting <laughs> <laughs> pro, 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 <laughs> protecting the Queen? You know, is it a time that there's a lot of people who actually feel the same way Morgan feels? You know, I think Piers, to be honest with you. Oh, he's Piers, just gonna, Piers like, is trying to get a knighthood. He just wants to get knighted. He's trying to get a knighthood for services, to, you know, for the media. Like, because it's true. He's like, like, everybody was asking, like, why are you caping yeah. for the queen? Like, yeah. mm -hmm. look, there's nothing wrong with if he wants to do that. He has mm -hmm. the right to do it. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. what he was trying to say. Oh, is he because he has a personal, you know, vendetta with. Uh, yeah, he, he definitely does. And like, you know, for, for him to say stuff like, okay, he said, I watched that interview where he walked out like a baby. And, <laughs> you know, I laughed. It was like, this is 20, it's 20 to 7 in the morning. This man is having a breakdown on right, national right, television. Not, it's, uh, early, <laughs> it's early in the morning, brother. You shouldn't be doing that that early in the morning. And all the guy said to him was, well, you know, his, I'm not going to be able to do That's exactly what it was. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, it's funny because the co-host mm -hmm. said to him, look, mm -hmm. we know that you have this vendetta against this woman because she mm -hmm. cut you off. This guy mm -hmm. couldn't take it. It was the truth. So he got mm -hmm. up and he left. Now, mm -hmm. the problem that I have with, with Piers Morgan and what he did was that I think Piers Morgan has a lot of energy for mm -hmm. Meghan Markle. I don't know why, but mm -hmm. another thing that he does a lot, you know, he told a lie. He said, the British media is not mm. institutionally racist. Now that is just a load of bollocks. Now, I know mm. he's I know he's a newspaper editor, but he knows mm -hmm. that the that the British media is very sexist, very racist. You could just Google and just look at whether it's the Daily Mail, the Mirror, any paper, and look at how they report on on on, on different crimes. I mean, the the the, the what's his name um, shooter in in. Uh, Christchurch in New Zealand mm. they showed his baby pictures they actually mm. put a baby picture of this guy <laughs> and I think it was a picture of his dad holding him as a baby and you see they try and humanize uh -huh. Uh -huh. The, the, the white guy uh -huh. the Muslim you, all you have to do is sneeze and you are you know Taliban you're third generation Taliban you want to kill right. all the white people in the world so they demonize you you know what I mean? Right. And like, if you look at how they report, so Piers knows this. So for him to sit there on TV and lie like that, that's why they had to call him out, you mm -hmm. know? And, you know, if, if he says, okay, he takes offense at saying that the, 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 royal, um, the royal family is racist, mm -hmm. you know, that's, that's one thing. Mm -hmm. But you cannot say that the, the, me the media, the media, the British media is racist. I know it's racist. Mm -hmm. He knows it's racist. You know, and then he doubled down because on Twitter later on he um mm -hmm. he put some post and he used like a Winston Churchill quote. I'm like, just the same guy who was cussing off Indians, Winston Churchill, the racist. Mm -hmm. Come on, Piers. Mm -hmm. Like, come on now. You know, it's like, yeah, I, I I don't know. I just think he was just trying to he was just showboating for the Queen, hoping he's gonna get like a knighthood or something. That's what mm -hmm. I think. But he he definitely knows that the British media is racist. He knows that. Mm -hmm. He's so part he, of the, the institution. He knows. Do you think he's also playing a game? Who Piers? Uh -huh. I think I think Piers is. I mean, uh, he's been in this business for a long time. You know, he's a, he's a media whore, and he will yeah. do anything for rating. Look, this is a guy. You think he's going to get? Uh -huh. He. This is a guy who tapped the phones of dead people. Like, like <laughs> there was a there was a scandal, scandal that that actually erupted because he. I can't remember what year it was, but he got into trouble for that. Mm -hmm. And like he he was um he was either hacking into voicemails or he did he hacked into and a couple of the people had died and he mm -hmm. hacked into their voicemails just to get gossip. So that's the type of guy Piers Morgan is. So mm -hmm. people in England don't hold him in any high esteem. You know what I mean? Okay. Like he's Piers Morgan, like, you know, <laughs> a lot of people just take him as just that annoying guy who used right. to be on Good Morning Britain. Right. Since we're just still talking about all these players, you know, um, you know, from outside, let's talk about uh, what you, your thoughts on um, Tyler Perry, you know, accommodating uh, Meghan and Harry uh, to one of his beautiful houses, you know. Um, I, th I think 
because it, <laughs> to me it doesn't look like the royal family even really wanted Megan to to be to be there. You know, yeah. I, that's just my opinion. I, I could be wrong, um, because they didn't even hide. You know, the the supremacist you know mentality against her against her, right? I mean, they couldn't. <laughs> you know, that's why that's why he was that's why she was having all these suicidal thoughts. I mean, you know, yeah, you know, I think it's good that he reached out and mm -hmm. I think it was tactical on his part. Okay. He's he's a smart guy, you know. Mm -hmm. He knows that, you know, they've got Netflix deals and book deals and all kinds of podcast deals flying around and you know, he he's Tyler Perry, <laughs> like he, he's got his own studio, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Okay. So, you know what I'm saying? He put, like Tyler's not stupid. I'm sure he's like <laughs> yeah. Let me yeah. just take you on a on a little tour, you know, like let me <laughs> yeah. show you my studio. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like this is yeah. where we made Medea and da, 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 da. So like, yeah. you know, the guy's not stupid. He knows yeah. that he's no, dealing he's dealing no, with no, no, he's not. And I, I I think it was um it was smart of him to get mm -hmm. in there first. Mm -hmm. You know, him and Oprah did the two pronged attack, you know. She mm -hmm. she did the interview, he gave the so it's like one gave them refuge, the other gave them a platform. So it's good. Mm -hmm. I mean, I think for him it's gonna work out. Mm -hmm. Personally, wow. I think I think it'll work out for him. Wow. Can we talk about your roots? You know, uh you know, you, you got roots in, 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 in Jamaica, you got roots in yeah. Botswana, you know, roots you in born... SA. Mm -hmm. Roots in SA as well. Right. My my, my um mm -hmm. my gra okay, so my grandmother was from Ladysmith. Mm -hmm. And then my my like so my mom's parents, one was from Ladysmith, the other was from Lavazi. Mm -hmm. And then and then my dad's parents. They're from, um, one is from Kingston, the other is from Port Antonio. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of like the, the makeup. And then, yeah, I have, um, hmm, what's my background? I don't know. Like, I grew up here. Went yeah. to Botswana for, yeah. like, mm -hmm. when I was, like, eight. Mm -hmm. Came back when I was 17. Mm. Um, did my A levels, uni, yeah. the uh, politics, economics at university, yeah. and then after uni, actually moved to the states. Mm. Like when the towers dropped, I was over there. You were there, huh? You were here, mm -hmm. huh? Yeah, I was actually at the DMV in Atlanta on the day that the towers dropped. I got my license that day. Man, you yeah, you've been so, around every you've been around everywhere. Man. You know, you've been, I've, been, I've been around a, a little bit, you know. You're really like, international, you know. So. I try, I try. I mean, look, yeah. I've, I've got family in the in. I've got a lot of family in the states. Like, yeah. I think the f first time I went to America, I was like four. But I'm, mm. you know, like I've been there throughout my childhood and in my twenties. Yeah. And then obviously, because because of Jamaica, there's we have family in like Florida, mm. uh, on the East Coast, mm. and e even even my mom's. Like like well, we have family also there in in in, um, in America. Like one one of the times when I went home with my mom, one time I went with my dad. Mm -hmm. You know, so, and, yeah, I, and I, I'm and and I'm actually you know asking you all this because because you have a lot of wisdom. You are all round guy, you know. So I want my, <laughs> my dude, this guy. He knows what he's talking about. He's everywhere. He's lived here in the United States. He lived in the UK. This guy is from Botswana. He got roots in 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 in, in Jamaica. You know, you know what I mean. So <laughs> he knows what he's talking about. He's an educated yes. guy on top of that. You know. So let's talk about the uh, uh, the what's going on right now as far as the, uh, the 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 COVID is concerned. We will be known as the continent of COVID if Africa does doesn't quickly reach its target of vaccinating sixty percent of its population of one point three billion people. Mm -hmm. That's the director of uh, Africa Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, John Inken Um the, the the continent last month surpassed hundred thousand confirmed deaths. Wow! Wow! So this is last month. Yeah, exactly. So your okay. thoughts on why Africans don't have the capacity, the capacity to produce their own vaccines? They are just not getting some. You know some of you know, the doses right now. You know, I'm I'm supposed to be interviewing this guy from uh, uh he's from Zimbabwe. You know, he okay. he's one of the guys you know who contributed to the uh, to the Pfizer vaccine. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And 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 um, you know, for me, um, my mom's a doctor, Doctor Mashwani. Yeah. So 
yeah, I mean, I've never been like an anti-vaxxer. Mm-hmm. Look, we don't have we don't have polio because we got vaccinated. Okay, <laughs> so I'm not one of them guys that say, "Hey, nah, nah, anti-vax." No, um, I do understand what. Look, in terms of concerns, I understand what people are saying. Um, mm-hmm. In terms of any medication, you know, mm-hmm. it has to be tested thoroughly and all of that. But I'm not one of these people who believe. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm a I'm a I'm a conspiracy theorist to a degree, mm-hmm. but not when it comes to playing with my life like that. No, yeah. and you know, and plus, when you think about it, I hear what people are saying, but what choice do we do we actually have? Like, think about it. You're not going to be able to travel if you don't get vaccinated, mm-hmm. and I don't. I'm I'm personally not opposed to it. Okay, I understand the concerns, but I'm not opposed to it. What I'm concerned about is the fact that there doesn't seem to be a rollout plan in Botswana. Mm. That's first of all. Mm. That that worries me because yeah. you know it's like people are defenseless. You know, there's I no. I just received about thirty thousand doses. You know, I, I I hope I hope so because yeah. I I mean I remember when um. I remember when the pandemic kicked off at the beginning of the first lockdown and there was a shortage of PPE. And then you say to yourself, how are you going to enforce or tell the police that they need to now um, set up roadblocks to enforce that people are wearing masks? Hmm. That police officer himself is now on the front line. You're Hmm. putting that man in, 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 in contact with other people without sufficient PPE. You wouldn't send a fireman into a building Without protective mm-hmm. clothing, you know, mm-hmm. you wouldn't send, you wouldn't go send people into a surgery mm-hmm. without surgical masks. So I mm-hmm. think, in that regard, no, I don't think that we should be lagging behind. And I mm-hmm. agree with you. Mm-hmm. That is the critical question: Why are we not allowed to make our own? And you see, mm-hmm. that's where big pharmaceutical companies get in, and you know, as we know, big farmers, mm-hmm. big business. But yeah. this is very similar to the, to to. to you know, 30 years ago with the AIDS pandemic. Mm. Why were we not allowed to make our own generic ARVs? Mm -hmm. Because somebody at, whether it's, you know, Glaxo or Pfizer Mm -hmm. or whoever was going to miss out on a check. Mm -hmm. And yeah, I mean, look, like I said, I don't want to sound like too much of a conspiracy theorist, but I think we should, you know, like 30 30 years into the AIDS pandemic, Mm. yeah, there should, you mean to tell me that there's not one single Monsanto who can't, Say okay, we, we've been in a lab working on something mm-hmm. to try and look. Mm-hmm. You got five million people in South Africa, mm-hmm. seven million, if, mm-hmm. if 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 the latest figures are to be believed, yeah. Mm-hmm. Or let's say definitely five million. Mm-hmm. Sadek is the is the area in the world with the most number of people with HIV. Mm-hmm. Why are we waiting for something to come out mm-hmm. of a lab in Oxford, or, mm-hmm. or, or, or 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 wherever else? There should be people in South Africa on the ground. Who should be studying to be doing this? Because thirty years later, if you if, if we haven't produced doctors that are mm-hmm. going to be able to do that or scientists that can do that, then we're definitely hustling backwards. Mm-hmm. You know, this th- th- these are the types of things that you know. It's like there's no forward thinking. You know, if you say to yourself, um, the Botswana government, look at the amount of money that the Botswana government spent on educating people. Mm-hmm. Why is it that we don't have um, some of those people, like, why haven't the industries changed? You know, the whole point of, of, of sending kids to school to learn how to cut diamonds is that they must come back and cut the damn diamonds mm-hmm. in Botswana. Why, you know, why haven't we changed these structures? Mm-hmm. Who's looking at these contracts? Mm-hmm. You know, who, who, who just resigns without saying, let's renegotiate? You know, wh- why are we not thinking like this? Why are we not thinking? Why is there no forward thinking? When they were doing Vision 2016, surely, surely somebody should have sat down there and said, you know, I don't know when they came up with Vision 2016, but somebody should have said, wouldn't it be nice if we had a doctor that we sent to school, that we've paid for, that comes back and then leads the fight and develops? You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's mm-hmm. what happens. That's what should happen. Mm-hmm. You know, we, and this is the problem with constantly looking to other people to solve your problems. Mm-hmm. People are busy. People are, you know, people care about their own families and they put themselves first because it's all about self-preservation. That's what the key to survival is. They're not going to save you. You have to save yourself. You know, we, we, 
I don't know how many times we need to be shown or told that we are on our own, but we are on our own. Okay. Mm -hmm. No one's going to bail us out. There is no, there's no, there's no, you know, there's no rescue. There is no savior. These are things that we need to tackle ourselves. Yeah. Well, even the, 30, even the 30,000 doses where somebody just donated them, you know, so we can't it. rely on that, you know. I mean, I mean, look, look at the doses that went to, that came from India, that went to South Africa. They were expiring in April. I know. You know, like how long is Africa going to be, mm -hmm. get, going to get the castaways? Like mm -hmm. how many more generations is that going to happen when mm -hmm. all of the resources, whether it's human or natural, are taken mm -hmm. out? and used and exploited. Africa is not even, um, you know, underdeveloped. It's overexploited. It mm -hmm. never got a chance to develop because the expo it's been, it's been hyper-exploited for such a long time. So when mm -hmm. is that going to start? When are these cycles going to end? Mm -hmm. You know, who's going to who's gonna be the guy and say, okay, you know what? Mm -hmm. And this is another problem that we have. Everybody wants to see success in their lifetime. And that's why I was saying to you that people have this get money quick mentality, mm -hmm. you know, Let's sell the let's sell the silver medal. Mm -hmm. When you know when 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 parents die or family dies, mm -hmm. let's sell the farm. Let's sell the house. Everybody wants to get money quick. No, mm -hmm. sometimes su success is not. So I don't expect to see success. When I say success, I don't mean my own personal success, mm -hmm. but I mean in terms of what I'm striving for for my children. Mm -hmm. I understand that, like for example, the liberation movement. Mm -hmm. If 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 I was going to be a part of that movement, I would have had to have understood that I may not see liberation in my lifetime. Mm -hmm. And are you able, are you comfortable with that? Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like, mm -hmm. and that's why, like, for me, I think about the slaves back in the days who used to, who used to know that they were going to die as slaves. Mm -hmm. Some of them must have had that thought that, you know what, one day, maybe three, four, five generations down the line, this is going to end. Mm -hmm. But just to, to live in a, in a time or a climate where you couldn't even think that mm. that's slavery where you mm. can't even free yourself mentally. You know what I mean? Mm. So, so, so this is the, the these are the, these are the thoughts that go through my head. Okay. Like what, when are people going to change this, 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 mm. this mindset? Ralph, now that we're, we're delving, I think now we're delving into neocolonialism because you're talking mm. a lot of stuff, you know, about Africa being exploited and so forth. You know, I'm, I, what, what's your, your thought on cotton, the, you know, the mineral that has been, you know, uh, exploited out of uh, DRC that we actually use in our phone. Oh, right? oh, Colton. Colton, yeah. It, I'm glad you know. you've asked that. <laughs> There's a, I actually featured on a song by mm -hmm. an artist mm -hmm. and it's called Colton. Mm -hmm. And um, he's, he's actually a friend of my dad's. Uh, mm -hmm. He's a guy called Rauf Adu. Mm -hmm. And he, he's, um, he's a musician who, mm -hmm. He was also instrumental in like, cause my dad is an artist, he does modern art. Mm -hmm. So he, you know, they, they work together and stuff like that. But it's funny, like he asked me to do a verse mm -hmm. or a song and the song's called Colton. Mm -hmm. And, you know, um, we could talk about Colton. We can talk about um, uranium in the sixties when mm -hmm. the CIA came in and then, came in and, yeah. you know, they, they killed L Lumumba and they put in mm -hmm. Mobutu. Mm -hmm. We can go back a hundred years yeah. mm -hmm. to, to, to when they were taking rubber out of um, right. the DRC. Mm -hmm. You know, now it's cold time. It, it was uranium. Mm -hmm. You know, DRC has been milked for, you know, ever since the Berlin Conference. Mm -hmm. Ever since 1884. 1884. Since mm -hmm. October 1884, they've been milking that that, mm -hmm. that, 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 that that country. And that's why mm -hmm. it's never known peace. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it's just sad that, you, you know, I don't know. Sometimes this stuff is overwhelming because when you think about it, it becomes a little bit difficult to digest. But, mm -hmm. you know, this is what I think would work. Mm -hmm. If, for example, the AU got together and they said, look, you know what we're going to do? They should have actually done this with lockdown. Mm -hmm. They say, you know what we're going to do? We're closing mm -hmm. the borders. Mm -hmm. No one's coming in. Mm -hmm. Nothing's coming out. Mm -hmm. We're not exporting no gold. Mm -hmm. We're not exporting no coal town. We're not exporting mm -hmm. anything. Mm -hmm. We're going to just trade intercontinental. Mm -hmm. Anything that you want, you need to come and get it here. Anything that you want made, you need to make it here. It would, it would you know, within... 
years, it would change the balance of power. I mean, look, k- k- kind of similar to, like, again, I don't want to get too deep, but kind of like when, when Gaddafi said, look, let's have our own currency made out of, a, not out of paper, but mm-hmm. it will be gold. We can get mm-hmm. our gold back. Now, mm-hmm. what was that going to do? What it was going to do was going to remove the dollar as mm-hmm. the world reserve currency. Because mm-hmm. what he was saying was, he said, first of all, we're going to let, we're going to sell our minerals and our gold and then even everything that comes out of here. So anything that we manufacture, you know, whether it's food or, I mean, whether it's um, clothes that are manufactured or whatever that's manufactured or just mm-hmm. raw materials, you have to pay for everything in our currency. Because think about it. Why do we sell Botswana diamonds in dollars? Why do people sell, you know, uh, um, Saudi Arabian oil in dollars? Why? You know, it's because of agreements that were made. And I don't even want to get into that. Mm-hmm, but mm-hmm, mm-hmm. that's why I said earlier, mm-hmm. who's looking at these contracts? They need to be changed, you know, mm-hmm. because the only way you can really, really change things is if you control um, your destiny. And that's why I said, if you close the borders and you said, look, we're only going to trade with each other. And if you do want to get this call time, you have to come and actually set up. In Africa at the moment, everything is taken out of Africa. And then the the, the, the value chain really starts outside of Africa. So it doesn't matter what you're talking about. They they, they they extract the raw material from Africa and then they process it somewhere else. Like whether it's oil that is taken in um, the Niger Delta mm-hmm. um, by by Shell or, or BP or, you know, even diamonds from Botswana or gold, you know, they take it out of the country. Diamonds go to Antwerp, you know, diamonds mm-hmm. go to Tel Aviv, you know, all of these, all of these things are leaving Africa, mm. and then you know, the, the transportation, the insurance, the 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 the, 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 the money, the real money, is out there, mm-hmm. you know. Mm-hmm. So whether we talk about diamonds, co- coal tan, copper, or even cocoa, mm-hmm. they get cocoa from from people in Ghana. They give them a few pennies, and they mm-hmm. sell us back dairy mm-hmm. milks for a pound. You wow. know what I mean? I yeah. mean, like you're getting, you're getting, you're getting, you're getting tons of, of cocoa for pennies, yeah. and you're selling us back dairy milk chocolates for a pound. Come on, man, that's robbery. And that, you know, that's... you know what? Like, I, I, I um, there's a good lecture that I was watching. It's a video, mm-hmm. and the guy says, "Look, everybody says the world should be more fair, and we should do this, we should do that. But do you know what the price mm-hmm. you would have to pay if mm-hmm. we lived in a fair world?" He said, right now, you've got your, and he mentions Colton, mm. and he says, you've got your smart device in your pocket. Mm. You know how much they pay the people for the raw material that runs that phone that you're using? Mm-hmm. They live in perpetual poverty. You see it. Yeah, you know? yeah. it's, it, it's worse than what the cocaine farmers get in Colombia. At least they get a little bit of money. These people that's, that's, that's given up the Colton and the raw materials from Africa. Things like coltan and cocoa that goes into chocolate, coltan that goes into phones. They are getting pennies. They're not getting anything from it. You know? And so, he said that he said, and you know what he said? He said, mm-hmm. if we paid them the true value of what these mm-hmm. things cost, mm-hmm. your, you know, your your one pound Cadbury's chocolate bar is now gonna cost 10 or 15 pounds. You know, your phone that costs, you know, maybe Six, six hundred, eight hundred, nine hundred pounds might go up to ten thousand pounds. If we start paying these people what they really, really deserve, you're going to have to start paying for it. So, are you going to do that? And none of the people put their hand up because they're not, you know. And this is the problem. And this is this is the main thing about um, racism and all that kind of stuff. People always talk about racism like George Floyd, the, mm-hmm. the knee on the neck. You know, mm-hmm. it's 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 the it's the things that people are complicit in. It's not necessarily the the act of racial subjugation. Mm-hmm. It's benefiting from stuff like this. If we're being really really honest, we know that like you know all the clothes that we wear, mm-hmm. they're made in sweatshops. Mm-hmm. You know, it's it it's it's the whole system that needs to really change. If we're being honest, in order for in order for things to actually get like you know really really fair, but. No, are you willing to do that? Are you willing to pay more? You know, like how like here you have like fair trade, mm. you know, fruit and fair trade coffee, but you've got to pay more for that. Are you really willing to pay more for your chocolate? Or do we or do we want it cheap and cheerful? We do. It's the same with Colter. Yeah. 
Well, I was thinking the other day because, you know, Apple last year or two years ago became a trillion dollar company, just mainly yeah. partly because of the cotton, you know, uh, mineral. Mm -hmm. And I was thinking, like, they can even buy millions and millions, at least 500, 500 million dollars and send them to DRC where they're getting all this thing, right? They can even do that. Um, and also I was thinking right now as we're talking, I was thinking about how, you know, our players, our soccer players, our talent is being mined out of, but then they come back and they sell as the game. Yes. It's <laughs> just like what I was saying to you about, like, you know, they're taking, they're taking cocoa beans and giving us chocolate. Right. I mean, you, you mentioned Apple. Apple mm -hmm. took um, 42 years to mm -hmm. become a $1 trillion company. Mm -hmm. And it's taken two years to go from $1 trillion to two. It was a trillion dollar company in 20, 2018. Mm -hmm. And in 2020, mm -hmm. it became mm -hmm. a, two, a $2 trillion company. Right. It took two years to do what they did in 42. <laughs> now, what you said, 500,000 doses is little. They right. can give up a lot more than that. You know what I mean? But is it... Look, we, we live in a capitalist society, man. Let's, mm. let's not kid ourselves. It's not a charity. You know, th th this is about making money. And the sad, the sad reality is that um, in a capitalist society, you know, the masses are going to be exploited. So, yes, I think it would be noble if Apple did that. Do mm. I expect them to? No. Mm. Because if they did, then, you know, if they improve the lives of the people, the price mm. of quotas is going to go up. That's going to raise mm. their overheads. They're not going to be a $2 trillion company anymore. Mm. And their shareholders, shareholders don't want to hear that you're sharing their money. <laughs> you know what I mean? Right. Share everything, share everything else but their money. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So it's it, it's difficult. Look, I know we have these ideals that we'd like people to uphold and all that, but mm. again, look, I, I I know we're living in a in, in a capitalist society, so mm -hmm. it's cutthroat. Mm -hmm. I want to talk a little bit. Yeah, that, that, that's that's wonderful, Ralph. I want to talk a little bit about soccer because I mentioned soccer right here. I know you're a yeah. huge, big fan. Everybody's a fan of soccer. <laughs> <laughs> yes. You know, I so, so I was wondering, but you talked about music, right? You talked about how we can improve our music to be able to export it to, to the international world, right? Yeah. You know, you, you mentioned some of the, uh, uh, the practices that we can actually implement. Uh, yeah. And I was thinking... How can we do the same with uh, our African professional football clubs? Um, do you have any thought on that? I do. Um, mm -hmm. It's funny you ask because one of the projects that I'm involved in is, mm -hmm. I'm not going to go into too much detail, but mm -hmm. I was having this conversation mm -hmm. with the, the guy that I was talking to. And I said to him, I said, look, um, it's crazy that, People, especially in Africa, they really, really love their, they love football, okay? Mm -hmm. And, okay, let me ask you this. Would you say that um, African footballers are more passionate about their own football or about world football? Or would you say it's equal? Um, you know, I, w I was thinking the other day, I was actually thinking the other day, if somebody is a supporter of... Um, not one or township rollers, yeah. and Manchester is playing. Yeah. They must stay home and watch Manchester. Yeah. <laughs> right? And you know why? You know why that is? <laughs> this is my take. Mm -hmm. I believe that. Um, you know what? Yeah, I just believe. Like, I think you know as well because I'm of the. I'm a bit older now, so I can I like I remember like when the Premier League started. You know, I, I think I think um, mm -hmm. you know, sport is sport. Like like we were saying earlier, like if you watch um, even at school, we we all went to school. We all mm -hmm. like were at sports day or watched some sporting event where our school played against another school. So just competition in itself and being a part of something and supporting something, yes. Mm -hmm. But to kind of answer what you were saying, like, mm. if you look at America, I don't think Americans look at any other country in the world or any other sport before their three holy grail sports of football, baseball, and um, basketball. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I think even something like tennis mm -hmm. or, you know, football, soccer, as they call mm -hmm. it, yeah? Mm -hmm. Anything, you know, squash, whatever, mm -hmm. they will like it after 
Like it will be, it will, it will never be in their top three sports. Do you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like Americans are so patriotic that mm-hmm. they they don't care if no one else um, plays in the World Series of baseball and it's just American teams. As far as they're concerned, they're world mm-hmm. champs. And mm-hmm. what I like is that they are very, very loyal to like. Um, even if there was like basketball here in the UK, there's basketball in Europe. I don't know mm. any um, American basketball fans who mm. who who are just as passionate about the Lakers as they are about whichever team is in Lisbon. You know what I mean? <laughs> right. they, they they may watch like the Olympics, mm. but that's about it. They're not gonna. They don't follow it. You know what I mean? Right. So I think yeah. the reason why we follow um, European soccer mm. is, you know, it's it, it it's. It's a bit like the whole music thing, where for many, many years, people wanted to make it in the States and in the UK. They didn't really see themselves as being superstars in Africa until mm-hmm. you had the rise of, you know, the, the Guaito guys that came in the early 90s. Mm-hmm. I mean, those were the first mm-hmm. people who were our age that we saw coming mm-hmm. up. You know what I mean? All the other uh, famous people were, were overseas. These are the first local superstars. Mm-hmm. So I think, I think that helped, you know? But I think is definitely a thing where it's about the cash and the, the spending. Because I think if they put money into it and, you know, you had the, the, the people playing, like, I remember watching the American World Cup and I, said, I remember saying to them, I was saying to one of my friends here in England because we were watching it at his house and I said to him, this is in like 94. Remember when Nigeria, what, what did they win? I think they won the they won a medal. Did they get the gold? I can't remember what happened. But yeah, 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 I remember that. I, I they did know. well. Yeah, they, they, they did well. well. Mm-hmm. But I remember saying to a friend of mine, "You watch Nigeria. I mean, America is going to get further than England in about two or three World Cups." Mm-hmm. And in World Cup 2010, what happened? America got further than England, and the Brit, the, the English. You know, they, you know they, 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 every year they sing football's coming home, every Euros, they, mm. like, the British still talk about 1966 as if it was last year, you know? Mm. They won it once, and they go on and on and on and on about it. And, you know, it's crazy because, like, everybody watches the English Premier League, but mm. England as a team doesn't really do well in, like, the Euros and stuff. Mm. But, you know, I saw that, mm. you, you know, look at what America does. They put money into stuff. Mm. They... Like, 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 you know, like um, when they held the World Cup in 94, there was no major league in America. There was no league. No, 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 no. Do you know what I mean? But what did they do in, 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 in the 26 years after? Like, you know, they've actually spent money. There is a league now. Now you get people who actually leave Europe and the mm-hmm. UK and they play in the States. So yeah. it just goes to show you that if you put money into something and you build it, it can work, and I think I think um, that's all that local soccer does. It lacks. It just it lacks funding. I mean, like I know I know people who've been on the scene and try and you know work behind the scenes and that, and it really does lack funding. There's no there's no money in it. Mm, no, no, and that no. is that is the main problem. And like you know, people will watch it if you have stars, but if you don't have any stars, there's no there's no there's no you know there has to be a bit of glamour. Look at UFC, you know. I didn't know what UFC was mm. um, 10 years ago. Now, mm. I watch every single UFC fight. I don't even really watch heavyweight boxing as much as I used to, you know? Mm. And, that's, and that's simply because of the fact that UFC is... You, know, you have to pay you have to, to, pay. to promote something. You've got to promote. Okay. We got, we got two more questions. I'm going to let you go, my brother. You've been with me for a long, long time, <laughs> man. You know, let's... let's, no let's no worries. Yeah. Yeah, to do this, you know, you mentioned you mentioned uh, UFC, and I thought about yeah. boxing, and I thought about w- what is going on right now in the UK. You have uh, you have Fury, and you have uh, Anthony Joshua. I think they're about to collide, right? I, and I think it's huge, right? I do as well. I do. I'm looking forward to that. I'm really huh? looking forward to that. I'm looking forward to that. Yeah, yeah I'm looking forward to that. What, what do you think? What do you think is gonna happen? I don't know, man. I, you know, um, I think I think Joshua maybe. She, he, I mean, he woke up after he lost to uh, to the uh, Ruiz, <laughs> to Ruiz, you know what I mean? He was like, No, I'm, you know what? After I'm he not lost to man Mr. Taco you know, Bell, like, yeah. <laughs> Ruiz looked like he was training at Taco Bell for three months <laughs> and he just came and just knocked 
I, I, man, and this is why you must never underestimate anybody. You know? No, 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 no. That's why I think even Wilder, I don't think he wants to fight at Ruiz. I'm, I'm not sure if he want to do that. You know what I mean? Because you if know, he loses to to uh, to Ruiz, he's, now he's gonna be gone. Speaking of speaking of Wilder, man. Like, <laughs> yeah. Before I get to Joshua, that yeah, you know, I, I liked Wilder. Yeah, I liked, really like Wilder. You know, what what one thing I don't like, I don't like a slow loser. Mm -hmm. I don't like. Yeah. I don't like a person who can't be, you know. Look, man, everybody takes an L. Yeah, and, yeah. And, and life, it's not a, and, it's and not even L a crime. Can build you up, right? Yes. If you take it with yes. grace. Yes, that is it. You know. So I'm, I'm just like, I don't like the fact that he's, he's doubling down and he's not. Nah. You know, but, yeah. but, but, you know, in terms of, in terms of Joshua and um, mm -hmm. Fury, I think that's going to be a pretty good fight. And yeah. like it's very hard to call because like yeah Tyson Fury man he's like you can't really count that guy out no because he's not easy to knock out in the first place I mean this is the guy who can <laughs> he's about 17 feet tall okay number one mm -hmm. and the guy and the guys you, you know what the thing with Fury is that he has he definitely has spirit you can tell that you know yeah. he has he has heart mm -hmm. and and I think um that's what's most important when you fight. Mm. You know, it is, do you have heart? You know, is your yeah. heart in it? You mm -hmm. know, because if your heart's not in it, you're not going to win. Yeah, because with, with, uh, because with, uh, I'm doing a lot of people, you know, uh, question his heart after he lost to, uh, to Ruiz. But I mean, I'm more interested because I think both guys have skills, right? Yeah. You know, what, you, mean, have... you mean, you mean, you mean, you um, mean, Joshua and, and Fury. And Fury, right? Yeah. yeah, yeah. Hmm. You know? I think Fury's um again he's very unorthodox and mm -hmm. like you know I saw an article the other day and he mm -hmm. said um he's not training he's drinking eight to ten pints a day <laughs> this is what the guy said he actually said that he said no nah, I'm not training I'm just drinking pints it's yeah like, I'm like you know obviously this guy is brave I found it funny I'm like this guy can't be serious he actually said yeah I'm not mm -hmm. even training I'm drinking pints I'm drinking eight to ten pints a day. <laughs> and and the, the in the article he's at, he's actually holding a pint and I'm like this is not serious. <laughs> but I think it's gonna be a good fight. I think it's um mm. it's definitely the did you watch the 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 Tyson exhibition? No. You didn't watch it, Tyson and, and um what's his name? And um you, you didn't watch the Tyson um and what's his name fight? The Wilder? No. Uh, the exhibition match, Tyson and no, no, um, no, I didn't watch the exhibition match. No, okay. I didn't. Yeah, yeah. I hope I hope we can do a lot better, like in terms of the yeah the um, the the the, jo the Joshua. I think Joshua Fury is going to be a good fight. I think it's I'm looking forward to it. Yeah, yeah. So it's going to be hard to call. Future? So what hmm? do you think about the future of Wilder? What I mean, <sighs> mm, you know. I think first of all, the guy, he, a bit like Donald Trump, he needs to concede. He needs to say, yeah. guys, you know what? I lost, yeah. okay? And mm -hmm. it's okay. There's nothing mm -hmm. wrong with that. You know, I'm, you know, I still love you guys. I'm still, mm -hmm. I'm still, um, what's it, what's it, the brown bomb? I'm still the brown bomb. I'm still doing my thing. Yeah. But I think first of all, he needs to do that. Mm -hmm. He does, he does need to like, um, he needs to humble himself because you know, if there's one thing that people don't, really like it, it it's not a good look either mm. like you know like the guy um what's his name fury knocked him out mm. the pandemic he didn't even say it, not even one thing throughout the whole pandemic then he came out with this video talking about this 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 that the other and it just makes him look like oh come on yeah. come on boss like you know Give props where props are due. Yeah, know? man. Let's wrap this thing up, my brother. You know, so you're getting a little tired. Um, <laughs> I know it's late out there. You know? <laughs> so, so, so uh, Ralph, I, I got this one right here. Uh, who's your role model and also um, your last word, your message of hope? Okay. Okay. My, my role model probably uh, like my, my family. Okay. You know, our family members, definitely, um, definitely my mom, uh, my, my granddad, my dad, 
Um, yeah, I looked to, like, I think I was lucky. I had, like, good uncles and, um, you know, like, on both sides, on my, my dad's side, on my mom's side. And, yeah, I really looked to, to kind of be like them, I model myself after them, my granddad as well. And you have a uh, transformational, you have a uh, uh, seven leadership, you have, uh, you know, you, you have question. some, you have some who lead like, uh, let me see, uh, Pokagami, you have some who lead like Masiz, you have some who lead like, uh, Barack Obama thinks that he was leading from. I don't know. I mean, mm. look, I'm not, like I said, I'm not, I'm not yeah. anti Obama, obviously, but yeah, I don't think he was a great leader. I think he was good for the time. And I think he was what we needed, but I don't think he was necessarily <laughs> the greatest leader. But I, mean, I, you know what it is? I think mm. there are elements of what a lot of people do, like the mm. elements of what Gargami says, which I mm. agree with. Mm. You know, maybe some of the things I don't. I think mm. with politicians, it's very, it's very difficult to mm. pick a person and say, I like mm. everything. I don't think you're going to like everything about anybody, mm. but th they're definitely going to be um, qualities. Okay, in terms of, for me personally, like, you know, someone like Thomas Sankara, that's yeah. the type of leader. That definitely, would, definitely. Was, was, Thomas, was, um, yeah. Sankara was one, Lumumba mm -hmm. as well. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. You know, and even closer to home, like our, our, our former presidents, President Mokai, President Masir, I think those mm -hmm. are, mm -hmm. they were very level-headed, especially if you think about the times mm -hmm. when they were leading. They were not leading in easy times to be mm. in that area, you know. They came yeah. up against quite a few, mm. quite a few challenges, and I think they they held their own very well. Yeah. So I would want a leader like that, like somebody. I'd want somebody young who could be like that, mm. you know. That's I think that's the biggest challenge. I think the biggest challenge that, and this ties into my message for hope is that I think it's just very important that we build our children because you know we we are of age now. You know, we are, unfortunately, we're, we're at the age where you wake up in the morning and there's a new, there's a new ache and pain. You know what I mean? Like mm. the, the knees, the back, the neck, and, you know, mm. kids are, kids are going to start having kids soon. So mm. my, my hope is that we can build, mm. um, you know, a, a generation that is mm. a bit more, a bit more confident mm -hmm. and a bit more prepared. Mm. Cause I think, I think even though like it was done with good intentions, like just you know we we, we were told go to school, get educated, and you know life will be okay. It's, mm -hmm. it's not really like that. I think mm -hmm. we need a lot more financial education. We need to teach people financial literacy. Mm -hmm. These are things that we need to learn, not necessarily at school. We need to learn them at home. You know, mm -hmm. we need we we should be able to do that. Teach our children how to budget. Teach mm -hmm. our children how to try and get ahead in the world. Reduce mm -hmm. debt. These are things that I think are very important. Mm. That's what I I hope that we can we can do. We can, and we and it should be something that is um, you know, encouraged obviously, but like that we can do um, mm. some something we can pass on so that we stop. Like I said earlier, instead of passing on um, you know, issues and stuff, we need to pass on wealth, not just knowledge and cash, but like you know, behavioral behavioral knowledge, wealth as well. You know, like. Um, the right attitudes and and um, the right habits. I think we I think we pass on too many bad habits. Mm. And and you know we grow up and we see these things like whether it's alcohol consumption or whatever. But you know we just we just pick up the wrong habits. We pass those, and I think we need to just we need to pass on something a bit more wholesome. Mm. If we're ever gonna you know make it out alive, that's what I think. My brother, <laughs> my love, man. No, thank, thank you, you, thank you, thank you. Look, it, it was good. I enjoyed it. Man, it was wonderful, man. Thank you for for your insights. Thank you for the education. Thank you for you are a very you are a bright person. I appreciate you, my brother. You have blessed that today. <laughs> no, thank you. Thank you for having me. Son. All right, bro. All right, brother. Yeah. Thank you, man. Thank you. Bless. I'm a rich right. man. Thank you.